Welcome to TJ's podcast. Here it is. The um, the two radio legends jumping into the digital world and just talking about anything and everything that interests us. That interests us. If it's interesting to us, it's interesting to you because we'll make it that way. <clears throat> um, Riggins, I don't mean to always come to you with these types of questions because I think that you're a prevert or anything like that. <laughs> just like, you know, I always would ask your opinion or get get your answer to drug questions that i didn't know about and it's not because you know you're a heroin addict and all that but you know more about the stuff than i do yeah this is the same kind of thing um what is the difference between a furry and a plushy a furry is somebody i believe and i don't know i'm not sure i think a furry is the person that dresses up in animal like costumes yeah and a plushie is somebody that isn't that also dresses up in costumes, but it's not animal related. I think. Okay. Does one of them claim to be sexual and the other one doesn't? I know the furries have tried to say like it's not about. There is a segment of of the furry population that is sexual, but yeah. that doesn't define all of us. But the only right. stories you ever read about mm. furries are. So it's got to be, in my opinion, a fetish. It's a fetish. Um, and you get some sort of, um, pleasure yeah. out of walking around in public dressed like an animal in a, in basically a, a mascot costume. Yeah. So have you seen this where, um, there was a lecturer at Berkeley who was lecturing on, um, parts of the the brain that are stimulated you know uh, uh, by being a furry and he he did the whole thing dressed as um, looks like a tiger in a full tiger costume and he's up there in front of all of the students and he's lecturing uh, he's some sort of a renowned scientist and um, the title of his lecture was furries neurodivergence and stem finding your path from zero to one to one billion Whatever and that means. It, it, do, it doesn't mean anything it, it it doesn't matter how educated you are or how brilliant you are on paper you have a screw loose <laughs> if you're desire is to walk around in public dressed as an animal you need to be in the hospital getting yourself seen about yeah i agree but how perfect is it that this happens at berkeley yeah of course it makes perfect sense um but still as a parent if if i had a kid at berkeley and i found out this and i'm like how much am i spending on your school every year i'm coming up there right now and I'm yanking you out of this class. But I'm yanking you out of this school. But if you're if you're okay with them going to Berkeley to begin with, you know they're going to have to be dealing with this kind of crap all the time. It's just a loony bin of Marxism, in my opinion. And then they're throwing some idiot who who obviously needs help up know. there to teach the kids while wearing a costume. This is what he looked like up in front of the class. Like the whole time. Oh gosh, that's what he's dressed like. Now it's an elaborate costume. It's no telling how much that costs. Yeah, it looks like a real wolf or a real tiger, whatever that is. But you just don't ever see that a person dressed up like an animal in that way, um, posing with the love of his life in yeah. the newspaper, hometown newspaper, announcing their engagement and upcoming wedding. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just don't. Yeah um Ooh. the um the furry claims that quote living openly gay gave him quote unquote superpowers so i know a, a lot of gay people would be like hey don't throw us into that category yeah, you may be doing? gay but we you know don't say don't say we all act like we all walk around dressed as animals all the time yeah that, that's a different thing 
It's got nothing to do with you being gay. That's something yeah. to do with you liking to put on costumes and And it just goes to um, that that entire concept of um, people can't just have their fetishes, you know, and and live them out in their um, in their privacy. Part of the fetish is making other people watch them and accept them um, com completing their fetish. You know, if uh, part of the fetish is dressing up in, in the clothes, that's one thing, in the costumes. But then when you, when you get out there and you make other people not only uh, look at you, but you're, you, in today's times, you're forcing them to accept it and celebrate it yeah that is what really rounds out the fetish and gives you the uh, the pleasure that you're looking for because this guy could have easily gone up there and talked about you know the science of what he what he determines is a is a you know a, a brain stimulation of some sort from furries without putting on the costume and, and going into his sexuality and all of that kind of stuff yeah maybe now i, I don't know He's doing it in a college classroom. If it didn't go viral, then maybe I wouldn't have, you know, if somebody wasn't recording it. But, you know, when they always say, like, let your freak, fly, let your freak flag fly, I'm like, no, don't do that. No. Dude, those things are for your bedroom, your your sex, sexual health or whatever. Deal with that in your bedroom with your significant other. But now, yeah, be be a freak out in public. No, 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 mm -hmm. no you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> because keep that over there. Because that's it's what happens when you take shame out of the society yeah people have no shame and i don't mean you need to walk around with shame you know like the, the bible says that the lord doesn't want you living with shame i'm not talking about that kind i'm talking about the kind where you just need to realize that that you're weird <laughs> you know i mean come on we all got weird things about ourselves exactly but um you kind of the, the weird things that i may like don't get enhanced by forcing you to watch me do the weird things. Right. So I'm sure this guy felt so satisfied leaving there a sweaty mess in his hot ass costume That's and nice. thinking, yes, those people were applauding me yeah. for what I, uh, how I presented myself today in my, in my truth. I just imagine you're waking up. It's you're at an 8 a.m. sociology class <laughs> and your teacher's like, hey, guys, you're talking about, talking about neurodivergence. One to ten. You're like, shoot me. Shoot yeah. me. This is the worst. And the fact that the students didn't laugh him out of there yeah, is another did. terrible sign. Maybe they did. I don't know. No, they didn't. Oh, I mean, I mean, he did the, the whole thing is being written about in in certain areas of the media is it's brilliant look at this it's just he's a normal he's normal just like everybody else he's this just happens to be his thing uh and then when they say don't kink shame somebody yeah i kind of agree with that because you should kink shame yourself way before anybody <laughs> else even knows what your kink is but once right. it get it gets out there and you know and and part of your kink is for as many people to know about it as possible. That's when you got to be shamed. Well, the, the, back back into whatever hiding place you have. The sexual health experts would say this is a, an interest that developed during their uh, probably puberty or whenever you know, and they didn't choose to be furries. They didn't mm -hmm. choose to be plushies. Uh, <laughs> but as long as they're not doing anything illegal, mm. you know. My problem is, like you're saying, when you take it out of the bedroom and introduce it to a room full of young people, students, college students, that's another level. Yeah, and if any, um, if anybody claims to be a therapist or a counselor or a doctor and they don't say this person needs help and needs to, um, to, to get a better grip on reality, then they're not mental health professionals. <laughs> that... Either they're stupid and shouldn't have the degree that they have, or there's an ulterior motive in it somewhere or another. Because what happens is, is that when you 
when you normalize things that are obviously not normal, then uh, it makes people feel like, oh, so this is normal. You know, so I can go out dressed as a tiger and lecture to a, a, I have a doctorate and I'm going to wear a tiger costume because I'm great. (laughs) And I'm going to lecture to these, uh, these little kids who have to, these young kids who uh, have to listen to me because it's part of their grade. They have to listen to me. So you see, (laughs) this is, this is nothing weird. It's just how I am, who I am. This is my truth. God. Now, I don't know how many older people go you know, to Berkeley, to, you know, who went back to school to get their degrees or whatever. But I can't imagine somebody who's decided to go get their degree when they're 40. Just sitting there and watching this and not laughing at it. And just, yeah, all it would take yeah. is one brave student to go, this yeah. is ridiculous. Guys, are we for real? <laughs> is this really happening? Did you see any of the video of it? Because it did sound exactly like you did a minute ago. Okay, so and when you do this, it's like, okay. What are you teaching me? Ugh. You can show a picture, but you had to come dressed as the mm-hmm. animal. Yeah. And this is something the professor is into, and he wasn't just doing it for demonstration right. purposes. He is into yeah. Pretty sure, yeah. Man, Berkeley, you know. It's just Unreal. a joke. Unreal. It's a joke. God forbid there's a bunch of furries <laughs> in the class and they're all like sporting boners and it's so gross. <laughs> you got a bunch of horny, you know, 18 year old college kids. <laughs> Freaks. Ugh. You know, my son said there are a lot of um, furries at his college. He goes really? to a little, I mean, a tiny mountain college in North Carolina and. People, furries running around there. I just spilled coffee on myself. I couldn't believe that. <laughs> you should stay far away from that school. Because huh? yeah. it's kind of hard to pants a furry. Yeah, right. It's I guess kids still set. do that, right? They pants each other. Sure. <laughs> Got you. Yeah, that wasn't even a thing whenever I was in school, pantsing somebody. That, you know what was a thing? Uh, getting your ass beat. That was a thing. Yeah. If somebody would do something like that to you. A couple weeks ago, Drew Barrymore was like, my kids love to pants me. I know. I'm like, yeah, because you won't slap that crap out of them. <laughs> and that's how, how yeah. egregious. I know. I still do that to my mom. Just. You know, she's in her 80s now, and she loves it. She's Got it's you. hilarious. <laughs> you know, when I take her to the damn Walmart, she's over there looking at something, and I just. <laughs> she's like, you better stop. <laughs> I'm going to get you. <laughs> All right, we got more coming up. Hang on. TJ's podcast. Hey, it's Ace. And for a long time, we've told you about Neogenics, Charlotte's most trusted stem cell clinic, and how phenomenal a job they did helping me with my left wrist. Well, this is Neil. Neil Simler is a member of the Ace and TJ Radio family. Neil, you took the free consultation to have them check out your elbow and talk about what happened just when you went for the free consultation. Uh, They were very straightforward and let me know that they weren't going to treat any of my ailments if they weren't 100% sure that they were going to be able to effectively help my issue. And uh, never weren't once were they pushy with trying to get me to spend more money and do, you know, the, the higher end shots. Now, three months later, how do you feel? I'm 95% better, if not 100%. You know, it, it's just been one of the best decisions I've made. Do yourself a favor. Get out there as soon as possible. Set up your free consultation today at acetj.com slash neogenics. It's N-E-O-G-E-N-I-X. Neogenics, Charlotte's most trusted stem cell clinic. They say there are only two things certain in life. Sweet deals at sweet dreams and taxes. And only one of those is certain this month. Which one? The sweet deals at sweet dreams. What about the taxes? No sales tax the entire month of April at Sweet Dreams. Are you serious? Yeah. And don't call me Shirley. Love where you live, Lake Norman, and pay no sales tax during the month of April. Only at Sweet Dreams Furniture and Mattress. Back to TJ's podcast. Hey. Please uh, spread the word. Tell everybody that you know to give the old the podcast a chance. I mean, <laughs> it's, it should be pretty simple. Just say, hey, there aren't many podcasts out there. 
I mean, you could probably count them on two hands, all the podcasts in the world. This should be one of them that you listen to. You got time. You know, you got plenty of time to listen. I mean, that's what I love about this, Riggins, is that we've uh, we've really stepped out here as pioneers of the podcast world. And, um, you know, we're in uncharted waters. Yeah. You know, we're on the ground floor. Uncharted waters. Early adopters. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Because, I mean, what would you think that maybe a a point zero 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 one percent of u.s americans have even heard of podcasts yeah for sure mm. um now there's a big rumor going on about this taylor swift outfit who, you know this woman who calls herself taylor swift mm-hmm. and her um big strapping strong rough and tumble boyfriend named Travis Kels. <laughs> um, now, he's a bro. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He's like, you know, Mr. Uh, big Dude on the football team, likes to party. Sure. And um, Jana Kramer says that she's afraid that Taylor, trying to keep up with him, has, uh, he, he's a bad influence on Taylor because she's starting to drink too much. Now, when you sent me the details of this story, Riggins, you know the first thing I had to do was? Who the hell is Jana Kramer? Exactly. Yeah. She's got a podcast. <laughs> Everybody got a podcast. Like, who's, who the hell was? <laughs> sure it's um, and I'd, ne- I'd never seen, I don't think, well, I've seen that she was on Friday Night Lights when no. in a recurring role, but I wouldn't have known her from that. And I never watched One Tree Hill or any of her movies or anything. You know who I thought it was? I thought it was that woman that plays on Mom. What's her name? My mom? Uh, yeah, that, uh, she's tall and uh, older woman and she's uh, tough, broad. As they say. Yeah. Alice and Jenny. Is that her name? Jenny. Jenny. That's West who? West Wing. Was she on? Oh, I would have never watched that. Hmm. Uh, Janet Cramp, you got, yeah, that. The names. I just saw the oh, name. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, and how, is she friends with Taylor Swift or did this just come up on her podcast? Like, she, I'm afraid she's drinking too much. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is. But she, she can apparently give some insight because she was married to a NFL player for a while. Oh. And he drank a lot. I don't know that to be true, but I think she's just kind of spit on. She goes, I've heard from people that this, this is happening. Hmm. And she's claiming that. Taylor, well, Taylor Swift is drinking too much because of her relationship with Travis Kelsey. And things she's heard about Travis Kelsey are not so great. Like he's Ooh. enjoying the, the limelight a little too much. The added attention he's getting from his uh, you know, yeah. relationship with Taylor. Mm-hmm. Things that are not so good. Not so good. <laughs> Do people like her? Yeah, Did I think Jana so. Jana Kramer, people like her? Yeah, yeah. She's had her own missteps. Makes her a little relatable. What kind of missteps? Do I, tell. T Riggins. T. I don't know that I have the kids the tea, say. but I think she's. Uh, I don't know. She might have had a little bit of trouble. I don't know that to be true. So you're just making shit up. Like, Maybe. Okay. Maybe. So then they they start showing all these pictures and little video clips, little yeah. boomerangs of of Taylor Swift drinking while she's with Travis Kels. It is. There are a lot of you know every game she's got a cocktail or a beer and when they're at these charity events together she's always got a cocktail in hand there might be rumors to it but she's also 31 or 32 but what do you care if she's drinking but these are events where people drink yeah they're cocktail parties yeah it's it's part of the name Mm. i don't yeah i I think you're you're making assumptions you don't know anything about do you think she's just trying to um glom on to taylor yeah. swift's fame and, yeah. and all of that she wants her podcast promoted and so she mentioned yeah. something about taylor and travis it gets on tmz now people find out not only is janet kramer still alive <laughs> is that she's got a podcast <laughs> <laughs> man we gotta we need to do something what can we say about taylor get us on tim's no say something egregious yeah but she'd sue us yeah probably and that and that the way it is you sue somebody that doesn't have any money she let somebody who does have a little money go. Yeah. Like, she's not suing Jenna Kramer. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's bogus because Taylor Swift, she's performing three and a half hours, 
you know, every night on stage or around the world. That her life is planned out three years in advance with albums. She's working her ass off, whether you like her or not. She's working her butt off. So there's no way she's like, you know, having a major problem. She's not a functioning alcoholic like that. <laughs> is that what this woman claims that she's doing? She's being a, a, a functioning she's alcoholic. Like, I think there's she might have a bit of a problem. She's huh. drinking too much. It's like, how the hell do you know how many drinks she's having? Taylor Swift's not looking for you. Yeah. I, I Once I found out who Janet Kramer was, I thought well, maybe they're just friends. Like, isn't, you know, you, sometimes celebrity friendships um, surprise you. Like yeah. Taylor Swift and, um, so is it Sexy Red that she's friends with? Ice Spice. Ice Spice, yeah. Yeah, they have a little bit of a friendship going on. Taylor's, you know, all about bringing in the new hot young woman. That's mm -hmm. how she sort of likes to position herself. I'm going to help right. out somebody who's who was in my position years ago when I was in that space years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give them a platform. Or she just wants to be um, associated with younger women because she's not anymore. Maybe. You know. Maybe. But that's like, definitely a move. Like I mean, Ace and I don't go pick, you know, on our morning show, didn't go, go pick guys our age to come be on the show. Right, right, right. You know. Even though you and Tech D. Rob act older than we do, so. <laughs> now with those <laughs> broken reader glasses you have over there. They're not broken. I cut those off like, on purpose. Yeah, well, whatever. They age you by 20 years. Having them on? <laughs> but I have to use them. <laughs> I would be able to see it's anything. The, what am I supposed to do? It's the taking them off and putting them yeah. back on. I'm like, good Lord. You cut your glasses. Ugh. Well, but when I have the glasses on, because, um, you know, we haven't reached Jana Kramer uh, budgets for podcast yet. And the, uh, the lights in here are not good. And the cameras are not great. So if I'm wearing the glasses, it looks like I'm wearing mirrored shades. Yeah, they do. They, it shows they up just glared out. You can't see my eyes, which might be a better thing. I don't know. <laughs> I can't win, man. I can't win. But yeah, yeah I can't help it if I got to wear glasses. Should I get some different ones, like younger looking ones? You think? Because I mean, yeah. I don't. I'm not trying to look young. But are those are those ugly? No, I mean, those are ugly. expensive. And you cut. They're expensive glasses. I got um, three pairs for twelve dollars at Lowe's Home Improvement. Oh, all my fashion. Here's another one. All my fashion comes from Lowe's. <laughs> and then I got a. I got a pair from out in my truck. You imagine on the Met Gala, Taylor? Who are you wearing? Uh, <laughs> Lowe's Home Improvement. <laughs> what? I do have some nice uh, reading glasses. They're uh, Rabans, but I don't do those. Like these get all scratched up and everything. You just you know, sometimes you leave them here or there in the house and and all that. So what if we get a big magnifying screen and put it over your laptop? Would that help? Yeah, it would have to wear the glasses how much are those i don't even know that that's a thing it is <laughs> oh it is? it is yeah that's what really old people need good lord or change the font on your computer make it bigger that's a sign you're getting old whenever oh, you look at somebody's phone you ought to see jody's like, phone. damn yeah my is wife's like phone that? is huge with the font the text mm -hmm. is so big yeah that's crazy but i need to do that and make it safer for when i'm texting and driving yeah for sure <laughs> i don't do that <laughs> but when you put these on the reading glasses on um i can't see at a distance i can only see right up close right. so if I, I i wouldn't be able to drive wearing them oh you couldn't no no because i mean i have uh i have better than 2020 vision at a distance because i had that lasik done yeah but um but i can't see up close like right now, my my screen is completely blurry. <laughs> but now you made me paranoid with well, my glasses. Well, no, I was just saying that because you said I act older than you do, and I think, uh, well, I mean that might be true. Acting and looking is different. You know, you look. Very, you just said I, I look. <laughs> you look well. You look old in those big ass, <laughs> <laughs> old timey. Bot no. uh, Coke bottle glasses. It's the it's no. It is the act of putting them on and taking them off. And <laughs> what if I got a chain and held them there and just kept putting it on yeah. and off like that? Yeah, that looks. Are those that 
that are a magnet together and he's like <laughs> like B R put them on. <laughs> <laughs> no, you dress very young though. That's good. Well, it's because I mean I'm fifty four and I wear pretty much nothing but merch. Yeah. Because it's yeah. free. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> young old people don't wear merch. Yeah. Mm, that's a young person mm. for sure. Did I ever tell you about that old guy? You know how sometimes men, especially, you know, Southern men, like true Southern men, um, they don't care at all about what something looks like as long as it covers them and they're not going to yeah. get arrested for being naked. Yeah. There was a guy that I saw one time in a mall with his wife, looked to be about 65, maybe, and... This poor bastard was wearing a merch T-shirt with the brand, and he didn't do it to be um, funny. It was, you know, this this was merch given to a customer who bought the product. It said Viagra. It had the Viagra logo on no it. No way. Yeah. And he's wearing it in the mall, holding his wife's purse. With his wife? Yeah. What a goober. He probably didn't care. It's a free shirt. But doesn't she mm-hmm. step in and be like, honey, I'm not, you're not going to do that. I've never no. seen my parents do that, but I would imagine yeah. if my dad tried to step out with a Viagra shirt or a Cialis shirt, she'd be like, Tom, what are you doing? What are you doing? What is that? All right, would you rather see an old man wearing a Viagra shirt in public or an old man wearing um, a shirt that had a big, uh, like I said, Abercrombie across the front where he's Ooh. trying to look too young. Viagra. You'd rather Viagra. Yeah, it's like, I don't care. But if you're trying to like fit in by wearing Abercrombie or something yeah. or appear younger, it's like, you're not fooling anybody. Matter of fact, it just makes me think about how old you are now. Now it's mm-hmm. the only thing I'm thinking about is how old you are. Yeah. I had, we used to have a radio friend um, and he lived in another state. Uh, and he was old, a lot older than, than we are. And I would say at the time, he was probably close to 70. And he um, he would wear Abercrombie oh. logoed stuff and American Eagle and things like that. Yeah. You know, and this was back when all of that was really popular. You know, when you were in high school and stuff, where you're begging your mama for some sure. Abercrombie. It was nice. expensive and... You know, he's he's busting it out. Like, no one's going like, to know uh, I'm 70 and wearing Abercrombie. Like, this is going to help me fit in with the other kids. Oh, mm. that's the worst. And I so, think a lot of people make that mistake. So is that, you know, in general, um, is that uh, um, top three fashion mistakes that somebody can make is trying to trying to dress way younger than they are. Yeah, and it seems like it's skewed towards guys. Like, yeah. it doesn't happen as often with women, but people notice, mm-hmm. you know. But, yeah, absolutely. It's embarrassing. We think about uh, women wearing um, not thongs, but those um, swimsuits where you can see pretty much most of their ass. Yeah. Um, when they're wearing that out on the beach or at the pool and they've got kids that are like middle school age and stuff yeah that's too much that's i too mean much. it may look good you may look yeah. good in it but you don't you don't just show your bare ass around your kids yeah all the butt cheek is yeah. out yeah i mean it's like what is that and the, and, and you we've women will say like oh that's just the style now mm-hmm. it's like what well, oh, okay <laughs> okay well, what if it's the style for men to go with one nut hanging out yeah right <laughs> i'm not going to embrace <laughs> that one <laughs> No, you go to jail at the beach doing sure. that. Yeah. Just like I'm not going to embrace wearing super high socks. Yeah. Because I look like a douchebag. Mm-hmm. You know, it, you don't want to skew, you don't want to try to embrace a style that has passed your age bracket. Yeah. Uh, better to dress too old. I think so. Than too young. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think so. What about skateboarding? <laughs> Is that still cool for old dudes? Ape is going to be so mad. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, that was a big thing, too, when I was young, wearing all the skateboard. He's got PacSun. Yeah. Sun. Mm-hmm. yeah, if you saw a 70-year-old guy, like, wearing, what was the Billabong or... Uh, yeah. That, what is that? D, 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 C, yeah. D, G. DC. Or, DC yeah. United or something, or whatever that was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's like the same thing. Abercrombie's uh, egregious, but that's that's pretty bad, too. Mm-hmm. What's the cutoff age for a man wearing high tops? 
Ooh, I don't know. I, I don't even know if those are a thing anymore, but I think I remember being around 23 or 25 and being like, okay, probably time to not retire these. Yeah, unless they're, you know, professional basketball players. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I'm always paranoid about somebody thinking that I'm trying to act younger than I am. Yeah, for sure. You know. It's a healthy um, uh, self-consciousness to have about yourself. Mm-hmm. That's, I think that's healthy. People are like, oh, don't care what anybody says. No, I care a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm never that person. <laughs> Dude, I'm not, not a whole lot. I don't think there really is anybody who is truly no. that person. No. To say, I don't care what anybody thinks. That's not true. You don't have to let it consume yeah. your every thought, but a little, a little consciousness is okay. Yeah. If you didn't care what anybody thought, then you wouldn't brush your teeth. Yeah. You wouldn't you wouldn't get dressed every day in clean clothes. I mean, you do those things because, you know, society wants you to do it. It's normal. My dog poops on the sidewalk, but he's also got a brain the size of a walnut. You know, it's like <laughs> it's not the same thing. I don't care. Look, I'm pooping right here. I don't care what anybody care. thinks. My dog does it. Well, I mean, I'm no better than he is. I have to go right now. What yeah. do you want me to do? Mm. I don't care. They can think <laughs> what they want. <laughs> All right. More coming up. Hang on. More of TJ's podcast is coming up. When it comes to losing weight, sometimes you don't even know where to start. You know that it needs to happen, but you need some help. Well, you start by going to acetj.com slash weight loss and ordering Calitrin. Calitrin is scientifically proven to help you lose weight, and it is not a drug. It is not a drug. Repeat that. So here's what you do. You go to acetj.com slash Calitrin, order three months, and then you'll get three months free. Four months, four months free. That's how it works with Calitrin. Welcome back, world, to TJ's podcast. podcast. There's a big controversy going on all over the TikToks. And it's surrounding a Hooters girl. Still okay to call them Hooters girls? Are they still called that? I think so. Hooters girls. Hooters theys. Yeah. (laughs) Hooters thems. Yeah, it says on Hooters, it says become a Hooters girl. Yeah. I'd still do it anyway, even if they didn't like it. Who cares? So (laughs) what? So there's a Hooters girl that um, show the TikToks what she does in order to get bigger tips. Yeah. So she switches out the um, the spouts yeah. on the liquor bottles that will pour out more in a... You know, what What is a shot supposed to be? A two count or something? Whatever so it is. What it, they have those tips. They're called precision pours. Yeah. And she swaps that out for a regular tip to mm-hmm. give a, the customer a heavier pour so that she gets better tips. Mm-hmm. And so the controversy is whether or not that's, you know, that's moral. Yeah. Is it's it stealing? stealing? And everybody's it, like, it, it's absolutely stealing. <laughs> it would seem that way. I mean, it's like the most common thing you always see on that bar rescue show. Yeah. He's like, you're losing a lot of money because you're not, you're not, your bartenders are pouring way too mm-hmm. much. But everybody in the comments was like, those precision pours are, they suck. They don't work right. They always shortchange the customer. It never fills up to the amount that you're paying for. Now, are those the ones that are electronic? Like, because on Bar Rescue, they have a sponsor where it comes in and puts those electronic things on on the spouts. Mm. And then it's dialed up to pour exactly an ounce or two ounces, whatever, and it registers. So at the end of the night, you can, or at any time, you can punch into it from a computer and it'll tell you, you know, if it's if it needs to be readjusted or whatever, and make sure that they get exactly what they're supposed to get. Really? So this didn't look like that in no. the video. It just looked no. like, you know, one of those uh, regular spouts. Yeah. Somebody said it helps tips because I always tip less when they have this precision spouts. I'm talking like a 20% tip instead of a 25 to 40% tip. Tip your bartenders no matter what, guys, though. So. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thanks for that message. Tip them no matter what. Okay. But I don't. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not it's not the uh, the Hooters waitresses. Posi- um, it's not it's not her business to be giving away more alcohol than people are paying for. Right. It's not hers. Right. It's the owner of the store. Right. 
So it's she's giving away something and profiting from it. She's selling um, stolen merchandise is what she's doing. <laughs> she is. Yeah. She's taking something that doesn't belong to her and then and then profiting from what she's taking, her ill gotten gains. So she should probably be uh, fired and and or arrested. <laughs> Did anybody say that in the comments? No one said yeah, that. You need to go to jail. Um, everybody just says, I hate those precision spouts so much. It makes you, they don't work right the first time, so then you have to do it again, and then you've over definitely over poured because it didn't work right the first time. Um, yeah, a lot of that. Most, I mean, it's all that. It's all that. Well, yeah, and a lot of people are, are going to say that they're on her side because they, they want the free alcohol. Sure. Yeah, they don't work for Because you know, like, yeah, they're great. trashy, too. <laughs> yeah. If you know that you're getting, you've got some sort of an under-the-table deal with the person that works at the bar, and it that under-the-table deal leaves out the person who is has actually bought the alcohol to serve in the store, in the bar, then then you're an accomplice to a crime. You say, hey, give me you know, a little extra in mine and then I'll make it worth your while. They say, you know what, last time you were here, I know you got the uh, the extra side of Alfredo sauce. You know what, I know you, I noticed you didn't get it because we raised the prices. I'm just gonna bring you out one. Would you say, no, thank you? Yeah. You would. Yeah, I would, but then again, I'm a saint. You're a saint. So Saint Richie <laughs> from uh, Winfield, Louisiana. <laughs> no, if um, if they don't have the authority to be giving away freebies, then I would say no. I mean, really? the price is what it is. I mean, it's not. It, it, they raise the price for a reason because yeah. they're trying to make money off of it and inflation and whatever. I. I'll either make the agreement to pay the, the price for it or I, I don't need it. But what if you really love a freebie? Like, what if you, like, really love getting free stuff? Like I, oh, well, I, I didn't realize it was a, that these people really loved getting yeah. free stuff. I didn't, some people, I didn't realize that. Yeah, some people just love getting freebies. So yeah. they would, it wouldn't even cross their mind to say something like, oh, I'm getting something great for free. Because <laughs> what, what do you get for free anymore? Not a lot. Yeah. And I think I think if you ask for it, and you refer to it as a freebie, it it raises the trashy level of it. Maybe. Hey, can uh, can I get some of that Alfredo sauce? And they go, um, yeah, well, I'll bring you some of that. Um, but then if you say, hey, can you hook me up with any freebies tonight? Then uh, hopefully I'm not eating in the same restaurant you are. <laughs> Hopefully, we dine in separate uh, places. I don't know. I've seen some of the places you eat at, and they are not, uh, <laughs> especially during small town yeah. adventures. <laughs> Go, where the hell are they at? Yeah, you know, my little friend Jenny and her handsome husband Michael, they only eat bar food. Yeah. Unless I cook it for them. They're eating bar food every night, every meal. Would they enjoy a nice steak dinner? Yeah. That's, that's um, handsome husband Michael's favorite thing is steak. But they never really do that. Well, they, yeah, they do. They uh, they go to Logan's once a week. That's one of their one of the things in their stop. And you know the main reason they go there? Why? Because they got the second coldest draft beer in town. Oh, the second coldest. Yeah. Who's got the first? Buffalo Wild Wings. Okay. I'm telling you, if you want to know anything about a sports bar in the tri-state area, just send them a text. Yeah. And they can tell you. That's all they do. It's every meal. Is that, you know, Logan's is the only restaurant in their regular rotation that wouldn't be considered a sports bar. Yeah. I mean, but it, it's not, you know, the, the um, Capitol Grill or anything. Right, right, right. One thing you don't ever see on Small Town Adventures is them eating or any any video eating now i know that's probably not good content but i'm always curious i'm like did she eat anything did jenny and michael oh. eat anything i know you say that but it's like we never see it so i'm always curious i'm like what well, i wonder what because can you go to four sports bars in a day and like eat something everywhere you go well 
we don't eat something at every place. Sometimes it's just pop in for a, a beer and, you know, go on to the next place. Um, but, you know, pretty much the entire day from the time we get to the small town, because that's always the first thing we do is go eat lunch. And then, you know, periodically we're getting an appetizer here or there, or whatever, until um, we're finished and we get back to our um, our home town and then we go and eat dinner somewhere Have like a full, a full dinner yeah wow mm-hmm. are they still hungry after drinking all that beer and eating all day <sighs> really? yeah That's amazing I'd be so stuffed yeah jody doesn't eat very much during the during the day oh does she make a big deal about it too like i'm not uh-huh. gonna have anything mm-hmm. yeah, pay in the yeah. Ass. um <laughs> no, she really doesn't but uh she also doesn't drink as much beer and that's what fills you up. And I, I've gotten to where I don't eat a whole lot. I used to just gorge myself on it because I mean, we're out. We're, it's work. Now I'm doing it for work. Yeah. I got to eat a, a cheeseburger and a pizza at every stop. I can write this off. Hell yeah. <laughs> and then pounding beers because, you know, most of the time we would have a driver or Uber or whatever. But the last few I've been, um, uh, uh, when I'm driving, obviously I don't drink, but. Um, but it's not as fun. Hell no. But Jody will have it a is. couple beers, or either she'll get wine, she'll she'll substitute a glass of wine in here or there. Um, but she doesn't doesn't eat as much. Yeah, yeah. Jenny eats the most. Yeah, it's amazing. I would like to see her eat. Does she eat quickly and like, you know, is it messy? Is she a messy eater? But I like watching mukbang videos. It's mostly. Um, a consistent, you know, um, eating where she doesn't sit down with a, a pizza and eat it by her, by herself. It's eating dinner or uh, eating lunch. And then a couple of hours later, eating a second lunch, she'll yeah. say it's time for second lunch or it's time for first dinner or where. So it's just a, a constant throughout the day yeah. eating um, just like whenever they go out every night and they they finish up at whatever sports bar and then they'll they'll sit around and have you know she'll have a few beers, oh, a few a bunch of beers, and then before she goes home, go through McDonald's and get the the two McDoubles with a basket of fries and a strawberry shake. Yeah, it's a marathon. Yeah, it's a, it's just a slow and steady, not a gorging, mm-hmm. binging thing, but it's consistent and a lot. Man, that's amazing. Like when she comes to our house on Thursdays, if I've cooked something or whatnot, then she'll say, uh, when we're cleaning up the kitchen, don't don't throw away my bowl. I mean, don't put my bowl in the yeah. dishwasher because I'm going to come back. And and so when I can have a pot of something like a jambalaya or whatever. So when I go to bed, then she's had a couple of bowls, like three or four, you know, throughout that time. And then when I get up the next morning after she's been there a few hours after I went to bed, it it's gone. Gone. Totally yeah. gone. Man. Mm-hmm. And then she'll also eat little Debbies and all that kind of stuff just sitting around. She big Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want no little Debbie. I need uh, big Deborah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Wow. I know. What but Michael is a candy eater like Jody is. Oh, really? Yeah. They you know, say, I got us some Starburst. You see all the strawberry Starburst I got in there? I got it at Costco. and Or either he'll just start going for the, the candy section of the pantry. I don't. It doesn't do a thing for me. Nothing. I did find some candy, though, that I like. You know, I hate a Twizzler. Yeah. I wouldn't hit a dog in the butt with a Twizzler. But Twizzler makes orange creamsicle flavors now. Really? Yeah. And, and I, Jody brought some home. And I just tried one of them. It is really good. I love regular Twizzlers. I've been. I know you do. Too. I can't get enough. You, you just like those. Right? Oh, What's yeah, in the middle pack. of them? Nothing. Okay, because these hollow. and that's they're hollow or they're they're solid uh, throughout. No, they're they're hollow. Okay, yeah. well this is this is hollow and a thin layer of that waxy mm-hmm. stuff, and it's filled with with some creamy yeah. type of candy. Do you like cow tails? Yeah. The caramel with that cream. Oh. Mm-hmm. I do. So good. I do. But I'm not going to sit around just eating Jolly Ranchers and Starbursts and no. things like that. No, 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 no. I don't do that. Now and later. 
rip my teeth out. Jody eats uh, strawberry and banana um, laffy taffy. Yeah, she's, it's those teeth. I mean, somewhere along the evolution scale, her teeth just stopped. You know what she told me the other day? And I almost snapped my neck when she said it. I'm not exaggerating. She was, I heard her telling them that she's going to uh, get her teeth bleached. Oh, God. I was like, what? No, you're not. You're going to look like a freak because she's about to get really dark in the summer or she better. Yeah. Because, you know, I like some dark. But if she, she, because her teeth are already the color of, um, of printer paper. Yeah. I don't think they can, you know, if you go in and get your teeth bleached, that's the scale that you would go to is what her teeth are. You got to be so So, careful with that too, because you see people that do it bad or do it too much and it looks so stupid. Surely she was joking, right? You think she was joking? How much bleach would it take? Oh my God. It's like they have to put it in a power painter. It's like a... (laughs) You know, like like you would paint a house with one of those spray painter things. You got to get it at the pool store. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> and then whoever's, you know, painting them would have to tie off. Yeah. It'd be dangerous. It's like bleaching the Hollywood those, side. Those big T. <laughs> or like that um, that guy who was painting over the wall that the those protesters um, graffitied all up. And then they... Um, glued themselves to the wall now that he can't he just painted right over them with that big sprayer that's funny yeah <laughs> we take one of those all right so i'm gonna find out though if she was just joking she better not you know show up looking like she got a flashlight in her mouth oh it's gonna be ridiculous i know but why would you i mean her teeth are as white like people would go to the dentist and say i want my teeth that color yeah because she used to be a dental assistant and that's what they would say i want my teeth her color and they go, well, I can't take you that that high. Yeah. And she's never had her teeth bleached, so why well, mess with it? Yeah, I, I, it's been a while since I've seen her teeth, but I don't remember them being yellowy. No. They're yellowing. Not. They're not. Yeah, she does. White. They're white, white. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for listening and watching. That's, uh, that is it for today, right? Uh, yeah, until later. Yeah. You know what, Riggins? This is, um, if nothing else, I enjoy this because you and I don't ever get to just chat with each other. Right. Visit. If, you know, the times that we talk on the phone and we're laughing and joking and all of that stuff, that's enjoyable. We don't get to do that very often because you don't like it. And so, <laughs> Speaking so of. I got you what, trapped here. The other day you call. I'm, I, I get a call from TJ on a Friday night and you might not even know you did this. You go, hey. And I go, hey, what's going on? You went, I'm surprised you're not wasted yet. <laughs> what the hell? Because you always talk about being in those beers on yeah, Fridays all day I and everything. Do. I mean, that's like, it's like when somebody comes in, like, oh, are you sleeping? Are you mm-hmm. sleep? You don't like that? I would like that. <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> anyway. Well, I mean, it wouldn't bother me if you called me and said, hey, are you watching a crime show? I go, no, not at the moment. Or, yeah. Or I'm about to. I wouldn't go, I mean... Why would you assume that I'm sitting here naked watching a crime show? <laughs> oh, wait, you would say naked. Oops. 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 Oopsie. You told on yourself. Oopsie. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching and listening. Love you. Bye. Serving the world. It's TJ's podcast.